Hi, everybody. Well, I have really a special interview today, and I have two of my really, truly, truly dear friends and all-time favorite people with me. So I'm glad we can all do this, because I kind of wanted to celebrate Christian's 30th anniversary on YNR. And mm -hmm. I couldn't think of who better to do it with than his dear friend, Michelle Stafford, uh, Phyllis of YNR. And we're here with Christian, Michael Baldwin, YNR. Thank you both so much for doing this with me. I think we'll start with Michelle. What do you remember when you first met Christian and what was your takeaway from it? What was well, your initial response? My takeaway, uh, that he was very funny. I met Christian, unfortunately, not unfortunately, I met Christian. <laughs> More to that. I met Christian exactly. at Greg York's funeral, unfortunately. Oh my God, that's right. I so that's where I met him. But prior to working with him, Greg York, who is our wardrobe designer for years, and Piest, um, uh, in what year? In 1995, he um, he always said you should. Oh gosh, it would. It's so. It's such. Uh, uh, it's so unfortunate for us that Christian is not on the show now because you two would work so well together. So I knew of Christian, and Christian was um, the master of ceremonies. And I really say this in people who were there would get it. The master of ceremonies at Greg York's open mic funeral. Yep. Here. Open mic. You know, when, when it's open mic at a funeral and just anyone gets up and it's usually not the people who are closest to him. <laughs> I'm sure you've been to funerals like this, folks. Like when you say, does anybody want to get up and say a few words? And it's the closest relatives. Are like the closest relatives <laughs> and, and anybody who wants to hear themselves speak. Mm -hmm. I call it, I have coined it open mic at a funeral. Yeah. Open right. mic night for right. actors. Right. Especially. Night yes. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and so it, it was a, a little bit, it was beautiful. The bells actually uh, uh, put this together. It was the, it was so that beautiful. Was long it was set. It was in the studio. Anyway, that's where, that's where I met him. Long yeah. minute. Ooh. Hosting a funeral. Yes. Long way. Hosting a funeral, Michael. Just yeah, put that in the big no, notebook. Interesting. But uh, Christian, what do you remember about meeting Michelle at first time? Because you yeah. guys, were, you know, what, let's, what, what happened there? What, the, what, what about Michelle? Is it her 30th anniversary? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking you about, you know, this friendship. You know, it's the same story, actually, because we both talked That's about it when we met, finally, that Greg York, among many other people, said that we would love working with each other. But I think we were on, our schedule was, were exactly entrances and exits, because... Pacific yeah, Palisades. I left and you came on. I was too evil. They left and I came back and then Sandra Nelson was was Phyllis. So we never we never immediately worked with each other. So yeah. um gosh, I think we met up in hair and makeup. I think you were there for some reason and I don't think it no, was No, we met at the at, at Oh no, wardrobe. Um we met yeah, at the funeral. I <laughs> but I think we were, I were, I think where we really talked was upstairs with Greg there and we no, were Greg somehow had passed. Oh. Greg had passed. Christian. Wait, way. well we were in hair and makeup. We were in hair and and the ghost of Greg. <laughs> and scene. And scene. <laughs> Thank you for the interview everybody. That was great. <laughs> the ghost of Greg brought us <laughs> Maddie, the publicist at Weinar just said this. <laughs> Maybe we should start this with a hard edit. No, look, Greg, of all people, would have enjoyed the funeral and whatever this is. You would have enjoyed it. But I just have an image of us always hanging out up in wardrobe talking because Jennifer Johns came well, in after that. Yes, we so, did. So that much of what later we did when we worked was, together. Yeah, yeah. Was we'd hang up and talk in wardrobe. Um, and I cannot believe that we did not meet with him there, but before we, we worked. No, I met you at the funeral. funeral. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll okay. go with that. Funeral. We'll go with that. Funeral. So, okay. yeah. I mean, we did. I probably was very distracted at the funeral as having to wrangle all the open mic people as they rushed the mic during the funeral to tell stories about themselves. Which is how that usually ends. Yes. No. But it was funny. We we actually Mel was in the audience, and everyone. It was a funny funeral because that's what Greg would have loved. He would have loved yes. every bit of it. You know, yeah. just to be clear. 
So Michelle, when you are on set with Christian and you guys are actually working in a scene and you have to be in a scene, can you get through the scene or are there like, I mean, what goes oh, on? Oh yeah. I mean, I know oh. you're- <laughs> you know, There were a few is... scenes <laughs> that Michelle exited early on. <laughs> no, this is the deal is that yeah. what Christian and I, since we're talking about Christian, he uh, he may appear uh, all over the. He may appear, to, and especially in this interview, um, <laughs> all over or loud. It is not, you know. Um, we're like full on actors, you mm -hmm. know, and and we really enjoy working together, and we really enjoy working off each other. So when when it goes, like we're ready we're ready. We have a really great scene coming up or maybe it's already aired. Wait, I think, no, it, it has not aired. Okay. And we really brought the history of the two characters into it. Mm -hmm. And that's our job. And we really love doing that. So Christian is actually a lot more, <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with me? It's appropriate now. <laughs> Christian yeah. is, is a lot more centered and calm than, than people would imagine. You know, that's true. Not not everybody, not everybody gets oh, to see that. Right, because you 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 have all these. You do your fun stuff, and you're this, and you're that, and the wacky, and the do, and then you know, then well, and poor you don't. Well, we've talked actually. You and I have talked. You know, and and what happens is, I think I come out of very quiet spaces. I had a, a huge family, so I have a very quiet, hidden place there that I can go to, where all the acting lives. But I got shot into the studio, and I just. So you start bouncing off of these amazing people and I get really worked up. That's, that's, I would probably have been medicated as a child. I'm sure they would have gotten me tied down, um, but they didn't. And that's important. <laughs> but Christian and I are both in a lot of personal pain, which <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> and well, most of the time, the people around us are in very personal pain. <laughs> Um, well, you know, but you know what, what's wonderful is like immediately it was one of those things because it's, we complement, we're not the same. And that's what's so interesting when we do scenes together, um, cause we offer something I think to each other, that's very different from what, what's in our wheelhouse. What was I thinking? What was I thinking? I, 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 I moved out when she needed me the most. Oh, listen, I chose instinct, to move out. Your instinct, your instinct was to protect yourself. I and should have protected instinct. both Lauren and Fenmore. I, Lauren from herself. So Michael, she's gonna come back and we're gonna get her help. We're gonna get her help and, you know, she's gonna kick your butt at ring toss at that Harvest Festival because you know she has games. She's really good, you're not. All those damn stuffed animals that you two won, they're still on Fenmore's shelf. Yeah. Those days aren't over. Nope. No, you're right, Lauren. <laughs> she's smart. She's so smart and she's strong. Yeah, she, she is. is. She strong. is. She is. I mean, she has to be strong to hook up with someone like you. <laughs> okay? Mm-hmm. And she loves you so much. I know that for sure. Mm -hmm. You know what? That love is going to help her find her way back to you. I like a free fall. I really like a free fall. Right. So and much. I will sit I think there. A lot of actors like that. And I will. I, and I will be like, Fisha! <laughs> I do. I like to kind of ah! know what I'm doing that well. Hey, wait, let's talk about Christian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, don't I was talk about say me. That what's wonderful Christian, you're not allowed to talk about me. <laughs> We're talking about you. Okay. Oh, so um, but I will say, <laughs> no, it's it, that is that, that that it's wonderful. It's like that we that is it's the joy of working with it because, like I said, we come in at, from different angles to the same to the same location, and, and that doesn't happen all the time with actors. There's sometimes a, a lot more work that has to be done, but as soon as we sit or stand or wherever we are. And, and that, that is always, a, it, it always amazes me because I think I'm the one who, who, but I will sit there at the end of the scene and go, I don't know how we got here. I don't, we're not even in the same set we started the scene on and I don't know how. And that's how those go. And it's the most, it's exciting and it's different and new and we figure it out. You're waiting for Santa, he already left. Hey. Hey. 
All right, I give. What is the lovely Phyllis doing in a dive like this on Christmas Eve? You know my name. Yeah, I know. All right, I haven't been around much. But I'm not up for a guilt trip, all right? I'm not up for a guilt trip. It's all right. I'm trying to figure out where I know you. Did you take me to that party with those you two guys? All right, knock it off. I'm not really in the mood, Phyllis. I'm not in the mood. I don't want to do chit chat. Let's go. Let's leave. You, you mean leave all this and go home? Uh -huh. Exactly. Let's go. Since I don't remember where I knew you, maybe we can get to know each other all over again. Michelle, you're such a dynamo actress. What do you think makes Christian such, I mean, he's really quite a, a fine actor. So what, what do you think about what makes him such? Oh, he's a real artist. I mean, you know, it's, it's either you are or you're not. You know, there are I always, you know, there are people who are, um, who he's just an artist. Like he's a paint, he's a, not a painter, a drawer. Like it's in, it's his soul, you know, it's in his soul. So this, this type of art is, um, that's why he's so good because he truly is a creator of, of, of things, right? And your friendship has endured for many, many years. And it's always so, I mean, I, I always love watching your Instagram posts, your posts when the two of you are dancing or goofing or doing something, whatever. It's so, it's so funny and also so touching and cool. So do you guys just, what makes your friendship so enduring, Michelle, oh. you know? Me? Oh, oh, well, I don't know. I didn't know we were enduring. I didn't know, you know, when we, we did that one little dance in the parking lot of I love that. foods at the, the beginning. Best. The best. And it was just like, hey, let's just put this yeah. on. And I people were 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 oh, I mean it was I it think was, the timing it of is it. a horrible yeah. time for people. And I just the response of like, oh, this made me smile. Like yeah. it's a hard time for folks. So anyway, um, I don't know. Christian's just great to have around. Everybody loves being around Christian. And that's why I love being around Christian. I, I wouldn't have him around if he wasn't a good time. He's also, you know, uh, needless to say, incredibly intelligent. And you can always have a good conversation. You know, he'll get in to political conversations. I'm, I'm not one to get into political conversations because it usually just doesn't interest me. And is the only reason, but Christian is so interested in things and really, really open to other points of view about the world and into communicating about it. Like, this is how I grew up. I grew up in a very polit political family and it was understood that you would listen to the other guy's viewpoint and then you'd give yours and you'd listen to the other guy's viewpoint. And I think that is, has gone away. And Christian really, really is like that. He'll get into it, you know, into very interesting conversations with members of my family. And every, you know, they may be like yelling and screaming and laughing, but at 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 the end of the day, we've all shared viewpoints, right? And um, and you know, uh, he has so much respect for other people, right? And um. You know, we were talking about something last night and, uh, you know, it just, oh, I'm going to research that and come back to you. You know, it's just, it, it, he's just very smart. But then I, I feel like that is self-centered of me because I'm basically calling myself smart too. Like proxy, aren't I? That's how that works. That's how that works. That's if you're good, that's how it works. That's how that works. Can I just accidentally comment on myself? can you imagine it's been 30 years as michael like does it seem no like that's a shock to me uh uh matt had to tell me <laughs> because they also included my three years in prison i was like oh you know because that really i mean the count and i've never i know so it's not really it's not really 30 it's, not really, 30. it's really 27 it's like 27 but i worked hard and they accounted <laughs> they wrote storyline to account for all three years let's just say i gave a kidney for that three years uh, no 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 problem with it you know glad to do it everybody but yeah um no uh and and 
when we, you know, they did, they, they wrote this beautiful 30 year anniversary show and they celebrated the end. And I thought I knew cupcakes and maybe Matt had explained more, but what I heard was cupcakes. So that was what I was waiting for. It was like, there's going to be cupcakes guys. That's I know it in the middle, weren't they? And they and didn't they had, tell they me. They in it. They had you on the cupcake. I, you want to see one? Cause I've yeah. got some. Let's, yeah. give, give us Let's a, show them what that looks like. Oh God, I can't believe you still have that. He still has oh. a cupcake. Let Did me tell you, I've got a pack frozen in the in the freezer for when everyone comes back from New Orleans. That's right. But this, and they stay, they keep really well if you keep them in the container. This is me in the 90s, and I'm delicious then and now, and I have an amazing <laughs> shelf life. Oh my God, an extended metaphor. So you have not everyone can do that with bakery goods. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I didn't know that, and it was it it it's. What was so interesting, because there's a lot of clips in the show and I think everyone's gonna just love them. And I wanted to see them because some people have them in their heads so well that they don't need it. And I just thought, I, I really between them, I need, I would like to see the people's faces. Cause you, I mean, we went back to, I mean, Laura Lee and I look like zygotes. I mean, you know, I think we hadn't even developed hands yet. And, <laughs> It was, it, we're sitting there and you hear Judith, I love Judith who's there, you know, Gloria. And she's like, this is damn, he, back, back in the crowd, the crowd's gathering. That, this is damn good. Oscars. <laughs> but it was, I mean, there was some beautiful work there. And I've had this, I've had the luck to have this, this extremely like, I mean, there's a lot you can squeeze into 30 years in daytime. I'm telling you right now. And, um, and we just looked at them and, and the people that were in them were standing with me watching, watching us age, <laughs> just age right in front of me. Um, and it's stunning. And it, 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 it was not anything in my life that I expected. I was medicine, you know that, Michael. Right. Um, and this came to me, which was wonderful. And I was smart enough to notice it when it came in the door and stick with it like a remora, you know, they will try and fire me over and over and over again. I just don't get the memo and I keep showing up. And that's really what you do to get to 30. <laughs> Michelle, were there any, like, I know there's been so many scenes over the years, but is there anything that stands out to you in working with Kristen, that a scene that you guys did as Michael and Phyllis that mm. sticks with uh, you? Yes, all? yes. And it's uh -huh. not what you think it, it's gonna be. I've got a few. All right. Let, this is this is what I look forward to with actors, right? And um, I would assume writers look forward to like little surprises. There was, there Phyllis was trying to exonerate Daniel for something. I, I don't, I don't know what it was for. I can't remember. It wasn't the Cassie and the thing. It was right. something later on, right? And Phyllis was trying to get some some proof that he didn't do something. And um, so she had to go to a big dump and, and find, she had to go to the dump and she had to find it in the dump, right? This piece of proof, right? That was the one I was thinking she of. She has a conversation, you were thinking about, she has a conversation with him and the dialogue is just, Phyllis, what are you doing? Do you know what's there? <laughs> there's there's rats there's hypodermic needles there's he said this is a really bad idea and it's this whole whole like three page scene or two page scene of of that you can't go it's a bad idea <laughs> christian chose that <laughs> the idea of going through trash oh my god maybe i don't think this is i will be the only one it thinking but the idea of going through trash for his character would be abhorrent. Like there'd be nothing worse than going to a dump and going through trash. So the way he's playing it, he's actually starting to hyperventilate as he's like, do you realize there's rats and hypodermic needles? And oh, do you realize? And I could not keep it together. We had to... We had to keep on shooting it. And at the end of the scene, I'm trying to not laugh. At the end of the scene, I just fell to the out of the shot because I was, I just couldn't. 
Oh, it was so funny. Literally, she's your- going like this, just not like, and and, and uh, just right out of the shot. And I, somehow it's on tape. So I don't know how I see that, but um, oh. yeah, that was. And that then was- and then there's a scene afterward where everybody's at the dump, Nick and Phyllis and and um, and Lauren and Michael and some other, who were the other folks there? A lot, but, you know, the police um, and all that. He, he had a whole hazmat, hazmat. suit on. And I think someone make him, made him take a couple of things away because they were like, okay. Oh, so it's perfect. like take off one accessory before you leave the house. That's that. Exactly, take something off. This is crazy. What are our odds of finding people to come down here in the cold and sift through mountains of rotting trash? Oh. It'll take some very good friends. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Hey. What are you doing here? Oh my God, I I can't believe you've done this. Thank you. Of course. A pleasure. Uh, you may want to rephrase that. Sure, let's do it well. Okay. <gasps> Just being nice. Hey. Here we come. Reinforcements. Hey oh. guys. All right. Somebody send for a search party. <laughs> Watch your step. Hey. What's a nice broad like you doing in a dump like this? <laughs> I want right, Murphy. I want right. I want right. Oh, is you okay? Yes. Yeah. I'm just overwhelmed. Oh, the sm- smell ain't that bad. <laughs> you know, I'm overwhelmed that you guys would all come out here. And it's your anniversary, and you would come here to support Daniel. Honey, could we have... Any fun knowing that you're out here? Of course we're here. Yeah, it'll be a great story to tell Fenmore. So this was your choice too, Christian? Of- well, you know, I have a, I have It a was role his role. choice. No, I- it was totally his choice to have my, have is a- that Michael's so, so fastidious and such a neat freak. And something yeah. like this would actually make his heart, you know? You've got to look for the Easter eggs in your character. And I remember not this year, but a few years before they had made Michael clean when he was nervous. So I'm going around my apartment just uh, cleaning. And I thought, that's that's new. And a lot of people like not my character. It's like, oh no, I've got this now. It's in my little yeah. like quiver. Yeah. And when this scene came up, it was like, I, I know I detest every minute of this. And literally, they had a dump, they had a set made. I mean, it was like, it was there and it was in the hospital and I got a long, very vivid description of the dump that was kind of made for Michael's attitude towards cleanliness and in hygienic people. And that was really, and I remember I said, she's, well, she's gonna, she's going. I think oh, she's God. it was down. so funny. I think I she's hope gonna go down. It it, it's one of those. Down. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I said, oh, look at that. Yeah, <laughs> Ben, just, and straight. It's not like she bent over. She just oh. slid out oh, of the scene. It was, it and was it's quite the same scene. character. It's like. That was my yeah. favorite scene. That's it was amazing. really, yeah. That's amazing. And did you ever, did you guys? I have one. I have a good one too. Okay, what's yours? Uh, Mine is when we were, t- <laughs> well, also you were having. I know which one you're going to say. What? Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> There is a scene that was just Michelle and I, and I don't think Phyllis knew who quite the father of her child was. Okay, that was in the repertoire, but um, okay. Yeah, but no, but there's, there's, it's great because it was so normal and simple and just two really good friends talking and we had ice cream. And I always think of it as the ice cream scene because I, I'm not, I do know the broad gist of it, but I did know the in, it was more intimate than mo- most love scenes because we sat there and we talked and we made promises. And I remember the promises that we made as characters that our children would know each other and that we would live in this town. And we that would, was the writing fight. was really lovely. And yeah, and we would fight for you know, kind of fight with for one another. So every now and then, when she starts, over, you know, when Phyllis gets close to Jack, because I remember, I remember all the times that she got dumped, and Michael would. Phyllis doesn't remember. Uh, or she'd run. So I, I sit there and Michael is never quite happy to see some things that Phyllis has forgotten because, I mean, because it's her character is zoosh, full, full, full forward. Wait, Phyllis, you can't leave. It is words, Michael. It's all just words. Yes, yes, and I saw their effect on you. Everybody did. Look, it's obvious you're crazy about the guy. Phyllis, if you walk away from this, 
you will regret it possibly for the rest no, of your I'm life. I'm not going to let you talk you. me. I refuse no. to let you talk Phyllis. me in. I need to talk with you, Phyllis. I don't want to talk with you. Michelle, what's it like to have to know that Christian is in your life? You've got that special person that you can call and your buddy and all the things, you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's so nice to have someone like that in our lives. And I feel like you guys are that for each other or what our perception out there is of the two of you. But what I've loved about the two of you knowing you for so many years is that you've had each other's back. You've been there for each other, um, you know, and I think it's, it really speaks to everyone should have someone like that in their lives. You know what I mean? And yeah, I mean, what you could say about that. Oh my gosh, that's so nice. I mean, I, I, uh, he, I mean, Christian's just amazing. I mean, what do I say? He's just, yeah, he is a good friend. I think that we actually have become closer during this whole COVID period. You know, mm -hmm. I think that we, um, we have potted pretty much. Right. And, um, you know, you don't want to just have any, you know, also like at work, uh, we feel more comfortable in the last couple of years. I almost, almost two years. Ooh potting with people we work with because these are the people I'm around most and, and, and my kids. And um, so we have, because of that, like we have, it's like, oh, well, Christian can come because he's, he's- yeah, We're all on the same testing regimen too. Right, we're, we're all- so We know. I, I think- the kids, You have your kids too to worry about. Yeah. Right? So there's your children. And she's got parents that are, that are, you know, vulnerable too. You know, it's, it's, it's um, very vulnerable. So it really helped to be, I mean, that, that really saved my head a lot that Michelle yeah. had her family and stuff. And I would go over there and the kids and stuff like that. And, and has a big yard that people could come over. I mean, I had my birthday there, had her, her mom, Paulette's her birthday. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's over. You forget how long we've been in lockdown and, and being careful. <laughs> You know that 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 was that if I didn't have yeah. that place to go because I'm yeah. I live with somebody who's very immunocompromised, so I can't just go out with with I you know I might be fine, but I'm gonna care. You know I we just careful and, and you don't want to be the person who goes back to work, test positive, and shuts us down. Well, so, that I mean that's the thing, yeah. and and it's it's you know not to make this a COVID interview because yeah. I know people are over even feel doing it and sure, but um. But yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's, uh, uh, it's, you, some pe people have very, very um, conflicting ideas mm -hmm. uh, during this time. And so, but for us, this is our job and these are the rules of the job and you follow the rules of a job because you have a responsibility to the folks you work with. And that's just how I saw it. And these are the rules of the job and, and, I have a responsibility to people. So to stay healthy too, you know, I mean, that was, that's been my main thing, you know, to stay healthy. I look, this know. is the mother. She's got two children. There's no backup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, right. That, that but, there are things, but, but I can be that back to his initial yeah. uh, yeah. question because we got off topic. <laughs> um, it's so easy. It's just so easy guys. But I don't, I mean, I don't know. Can you put, can you put, I, I don't know if I could put any sort of sound bite, not that you're on our friendship. I don't know. I mean, I think it's, it's something that, that sneaks I up. think Christian is an extraordinary human and so incredibly talented. And my God, you know, he's, he's going to be off Broadway where he should be, where he should be. He's that good. And he prepares and he's very meticulous. And even with his drawing, I mean, it's all meticulous. He's just so extraordinary. Who wouldn't want to hang out with him? And I'll tell you, like, oh, my God, I had, you know, I had, and you know a bit about it, Michael, but such a journey through hell having children. Yeah. And um, there was one thing, there was one thing that happened during that time. And I, I remember sitting with um, Christian at uh, a restaurant. And I, I won't repeat some this, but, uh, uh, but there's one thing that happened and I told him and some people, when I told them went, oh, wow, that's, that's weird or, or something. Christian got the um, depth of pathos and disparity that I was in um, uh, with that story during that time right and when you 
I, I said this at his 30th anniversary, but when you have friends or partners or relatives um, of some sort that get you, it's a very powerful thing. I do, I do believe that we all want to be gotten at the end of the day. And we all want to be understood for exactly who we are and, and validated for who we are. Um, to desire that is a trap, but to actually have it is, is gold. So, I mean, that, if you can understand sort of like, that's our friendship, you know, I'm not, I'm not looking for Christian to be anybody, but who he is, you know, now maybe I'll, I'll, I'll in my life, find a boyfriend like that. Good God. It just comes back to me, doesn't it? <laughs> but what she said, she said, I mean, and again, it wasn't just cupcakes. People got up and made speeches and it was, yeah. just, I was a wreck the whole day. Were you, were you? Were you? I, 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 just because you're seeing, you're, you're literally as Michael and as Christian going through 30 years on two different tracks. I'm seeing that life and, and, and making it real on the camera. And then we go in there and people came in on days off and, and Michelle said some of the sweetest things, which she, I did. I, I said, told her about that. She said, <laughs> She said that I get you and you get me. And that really is. And I've heard people say that honestly, not to get heavy, but I've heard people say it on their deathbeds as something they wanted. I've got something on my refrigerator. It's morbid, not morbid though. Well, I always go back to the deathbed. (laughs) Well, it is a deathbed. On the deathbed, you want to be able to say some great stuff. I just want to be no. laying there with my children, one with on Anne one side, on the other, saying, "Yeah, you were the greatest thing. You yeah. are the re- ah, ah, that's all I want." And and it was funny when Anne, on her deathbed, her younger sister came up, and and Christopher wrote it. Anne wrote Rice it is who he's talking Anne about. Rice. Rice. Yeah, yeah, sorry, and and goes, "What a ride you took us on." Ah, uh, I mean, I could die right there. <laughs> that's. It is. And it's one of those things where, you know, I have on there, they said the, the seven things that people who near their end of life wish they had done. And it's on my refrigerator. And a lot of it's like, I wish I'd lived my life for myself and not for other people. I wish I'd worked less and done more. I wish I had lived for other people for, to, to being what they wanted rather than what I, you know, and it's very subtle changes, but very powerful stuff. You know, there's another list that says I should take care of my, I should have taken care of my teeth. And I think it's equally valid. Um, but it's, it's, those are the kind of things that we were sitting there looking at 30 years of travel. And, you know, and I got up there and tried to speak <laughs> because Maddie goes, well, you might want to throw something together. I'm like, Ooh, what? Did you get, so through? Did you get through yeah, I, I, I got, I had a little trouble starting, but I did get through it. Um, and it was and, and, and it was self-revelatory because, you know, I kind of had some moments, but we had so much to learn. You know, I was working so hard on the script that there was a lot of you know, I get pretty meticulous about what, what I writing down stuff, because, you know, someone asks you to speak, you take the time to speak. And I spoke at, at, at Tracy's anniversary and stuff. But it, it, it's amazing. It, it really is a powerful thing, like I said, on two tracks and to realize you've lived both those lives and they were kind of equally important in many ways on many levels but but if someone did that someone said that to me in life someone important said that besides it was the second time i've heard it and that was from michelle was like no third time but it was like that all i wanted was to be gotten people at that's all i wanted and you did that and i was like wow because that's a, that's, that's a powerful thing on both sides of that equation. Someone who made the effort and someone who was worth the effort, you know, and it, it's, it's really, it gets me worked up. I mean, that, that just saying it just now, but I mean, it is, it's such a human thing and it's so beyond possession or reputation, you know. Uh, you both did a toy drive, Michelle, you organized that or? Mm-hmm. You, second you were, year in a row. You were second year in a row. Tell me a little bit about it. Was for the NAACP? Or- well, I mean, there. This is how it, last year when um, the governor uh, deemed the entertainment industry um, exempt of all curfew and exempt of certain rules that other people were curfewed. Along the same time, my my cousin has a restaurant and just went through such hell last year here in California. It was horrendous, and so I thought, wait a second, I 
I can stay out all night, but my cousin has to close up shop. And I just felt like it was so unfair, which then I thought, well, if we have um, the, the freedom to work and others don't, we have the freedom to make money, um, we must be giving back, right? We must give back to the people who are just, have been just killed during this. And so I just thought uh, it was coming close to Christmas. I thought that the best way to do this was, you know, all these little babies who wouldn't get um, uh, Christmas gifts, let's let's get, and, and people, the cast throwing, not, not every single cast member, by the way, okay? No, a few. I'm not going to get... Not name your names. But name I'm names. telling you, like through through so much money um, at me to do this. My gosh, thank you for doing this. Thank you. So uh, my friend is Reverend Fred Shaw, and he's the head of the NAACP Inglewood branch and very, very connected to the community, right? And exactly what groups need it. So he organized that part for me. I called him and I said, can you help me with this? He organized that part. So the toys would be um, distributed through the Salvation Army. Um, last year, we couldn't get actors into it because um, we had the COVID protocols. Yeah, we couldn't right? go out into any other environment. Yeah, so I had some friends from high school and Christian help last year. But this year, we went to Big Lots and Big Lots this year gave Big us lots. a discount. They gave us a discount on the toys. We were able, uh, you know, people donated again this year, but it was funny because I saw Fred a couple months ago and he said, you're doing the toy drive again, right? And I said, oh yeah, I, I think I will. And he goes, oh yeah, you're doing it again. That's who you need in your life. <laughs> All right. And I said, okay, like you've spoken, I will be doing it again because it's tougher this year than it was last year. Now things have legit closed. Now time has gone on. People see are more angry. I mean, I almost took someone down at the big lots. I'm not gonna lie. She was mad that we were taking so much time, a woman in line. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. We're just getting toys for children who would have nothing on Christmas morning. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, she started to get into it with me. And y'all know <laughs> I play Phyllis. I play Phyllis. I got fire in my belly. Okay. <laughs> Listen, don't be getting all, mad. It all went back. It all you, went back to Phyllis. You got to get your tablecloths. <laughs> all about Phyllis. Was it successful though? How do you feel it went in oh. the end? <laughs> Wait, I'm, will you I'm invite sorry, me to her 30th? I digress. So I can talk about just, her. No, it was so amazing, Christian. It was so amazing. No, I, so I missed that done, moment. Right? You saw the oh, pictures. We're there. Yeah. I made the video. No, I was <laughs> asking oh, Michael. Oh, wait. Oh. <laughs> so, and then we went, and everybody, the uh, you know, um, Reverend Mosley, who's with the um, oh National Action Network, which is a huge civil rights organization across the country. Um, uh, Reverend Bowie, who's with one of the major churches there. They're all so connected. They're lovely human beings. Every day they are fighting. It is so amazing. Good fight, man. Oh. Uh, Big John Harrell, who's gone to Congress to get, I mean, I can go on and on and on. Oh, they right. have programs there where they're taking people who have been incarcerated and, and they're union people. They make them, uh, train them in the craft. So they come out and not just sit around and trying to look for jobs. They become employable. Employable. In parts of the community. And they right. do this from the ground. They're doing it ground up, not down. They're in the community. I mean, and the main thing is they grew up in the community. I'm talking about Crunshaw South Central. They grew up in the community and they're still in the community giving back to the community. And so this is, they know who's really in need. And so it was, it was just, we had, we were in euphoria. We had so much fun. Yeah. We had so much fun. You could tell by the pictures. It looked like you had a lot of fun. Yeah. So you, you're happy with how it went other than the lady in the line. First time we did it, people would come and ask what we were doing at the big locks, the other, and, and they went and bought gifts. Oh, and they went and bought things, right? 
So that we, I mean, again, people come out of their houses and it's, we're all locked down, you get, you get ramped up, but people understood and people, you know, the, the workers at Big Lots, I'm behind, the, I'm behind the counter checking out. I kept saying, I'm a checker too. Where's our <laughs> coffee break? But I mean, it, it was just, they were wonderful. And the big lot, and, and the people when we dropped them off and you're sitting there facing the Salvation Army, you're facing the NAACP. You're like, what did I do today? <laughs> well, I bought some, I, I actually didn't even buy them. I carried some gifts into a car and drove it to people who needed them. And that was like, if I, because I, I'm traveling on Christmas day and stuff like that, just to, for the, for my schedule. But it's like, and I told Michelle, she was having it on the money. She says, no, you, you've got all this stuff. I said, no, it's the only, this is like, I know from last year, this is what Christmas is. Anything else I do is like, it's like, uh, you know, uh, Lily Tomlin has that great line in her play, uh, uh, Intelligent Life in the Universe. And, and she comes out at the end of the stage. She goes, oh, my God, I get it. Because then all through the conversation was like, was was Andy Wall, Wall, Warhol's soup cans art or were they just soup? soup? And she goes, it's her final statement. She goes, and I want you to know you're the art. This is the soup. But the art is there. Oh, and that's what it was. We were there having a ball, but we stood in front of like, that man left us, one of, the, one of the preachers left us and goes, I have to go now because the country's still in turmoil. I thought that's just like a superhero just left the room. And, but that's, that's he's, he's thinking of life in all caps because that's how he's, what he's dealing with, you know? And we got to help in that little way. That's wonderful. Okay. Really quickly, Christian, you getting ready to play Big Daddy? I am. <laughs> I believe me my first response was like I guess Brick's out of the question now I'm playing his ball <laughs> um but yeah yeah with this wonderful troupe Allison Frazier uh his big mama Austin Pendleton is is you know it's it's this wonderful uh it's a it's a nonprofit theater group putting it on that they've worked in in, in, in New York for years and years It'll be the first off-Broadway production of Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. And they don't let, apparently, let these rights out very often. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm really honored. And it's kind of my bucket list with the combination of Tennessee Williams and New York. You know, because when we, we'd go to the Emmys, or I, I started in New York, and all your friends are coming out. I, you know, Michael Service is a good friend of mine coming out of the Broadway plays. And you're like, yeah. But you know what? The fan yelled my name. <laughs> it's just, it's so interesting. The soaps were so per, are so pervasive. But it's that kind of validation that you, 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 I'm welcomed into this. Well, this is the point. It's like, if you want to get better, you go play with you know, better tennis players. If you want better, and I'm going to be playing with some, some masters. So I had so many interviews on tape of the three of us at the Emmys that are so <laughs> many interviews. I mean, they're Not just, a sentence they're, made any sense. They are, it was, they're literally the funniest thing. And I want to put together a montage and send it to you guys sometime because it's- oh, I would love it. Oh. Like, do you know what I mean? Making a much because there's so many for so many years because you will either was years you were nominated or both or won or all that. And then we're on the carpet or backstage and we're all kind of tripping over each other. Yeah. <laughs> and it just, it always makes me smile because I love that the three of us have known each other all of this time. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten to watch you guys all of these years, you know, and it's been so thrilling to know like people that are your friends are succeeding and and living life and and getting things that they would like to happen to them really happen, you know. Yes, Michelle. singer performer. Yes, <laughs> yes. Singer, Michael. I, I, just wow. shot, yeah, I just shot a music video yesterday. Wow. Uh, so yeah, so I am like I'm in it. You know, listen, you're a poster boy for me because that's kind of that's because we talked about that to to. It's never, you never give up on a dream. I won in court. The big fraud case you've been prosecuting? Oh, I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. Hearing you say it out loud makes the victory even sweeter. So this isn't any just normal meet and greet. This is a celebration. If you insist. I do. Andy, will you bring us a bottle of champagne, please? This deserves a toast. I am so happy for you. You are on one heck of a winning streak. Yeah, well, then there have been a few losses in there along the way. Don't be so modest. You are the best prosecutor out there. You, my love, are at the pinnacle of your career. Hmm, funny you should say that. Driving over here, 
I had the same thought in my head. Oh? Hmm? I've climbed the mountain, I've reached the apex, and now that I'm here... You're wondering if you can go any higher. The opposite, actually. One phrase keeps uh, going around in my mind. Quit while you're ahead. Christian, one yes. last so January 10th is a special episode of Michael Baldwin. And in the setup of the story, real quick, it's Lauren. Tell me about the setup of the story. Well, I, I, I mean, the way Michael anyway. himself starts to kind of question this, this long, long career he's had, and especially at the district attorney's office. And um, it's, I, I don't just, it's, it's not, doesn't come off quite as a midlife crisis. Killer alert. <laughs> well, yeah. And it just, and, and Trey, and you know, Lauren, his wife, is affected. So they sit there and they're like, okay. And so what, why, why, why are you, what is, what's wrong? What's, wh what do you want to do? And you've got to sort through and people all have suggestions and stuff. It's kind of that they kind of really cleverly crafted it. So people had ideas and those ideas launch into different past stories. So, I mean, you've got your, I, they're really, you're, you're going to love it, Michael. And anyone who is, who has watched the show, I think you're going to see some people's really beautiful work. I mean, there because I, I, you know, I, I, I again, I, I was, uh, I got to play in some, uh, some pretty uh, amazing company. All right, guys, thank you so much, Christian. Congratulations on thirty. Thank you, Michael. Both congratulations, of you. Congratulations, Christian. Thank you, Michelle. And thank, thank you, Michelle, Michael. for being here with us today. Yeah. Right. And uh, we'll see you all soon, hopefully in person in 2022. It's been a few oh, years yeah. because I've even seen you in person. So we'll yeah. see. We'll see. All right. Happy 2022. Thank you. You too. Happy 2022. Thank you.